Hello, this is Science Shorts here. I'm going to be going through some A-level physics multiple choice questions. These are for AQA, but they're good no matter what board you do, to be honest. So this is questions 7.3, electric fields. Links to where you can get these PMT physics and mass tutor questions is in the description. Let's go. Question one, two parallel plates. They have equal and opposite charges. Okay. So it's a uniform field. Uniform field literally means the field strength is the same everywhere. So therefore, if that's the case, the field strength cannot be changing. The answer has to be A. It's because the potential changes linearly as you go across. Therefore, it doesn't get any stronger or weaker as you go across. Two, we have M, charge Q accelerated through a potential difference. Okay, average acceleration of the particle so we're thinking about acceleration, we're looking for A. So we know that the force due to the electric field is equal to MA. And the force from an electric field is equal to EQ. But we have potential difference, not field strength. So therefore, we know that electric field strength is equal to V over D. So therefore, popping that in instead of E, we have VQ over D is equal to MA. Putting M over the other side, we end up with V, Q over M, D. So the answer is A again. Three, we have an electron, electric field strength of that. What is the ratio of electric force to gravitational force for the electron? Okay, so electric force is equal to E, Q. Gravitational force is going to be, well, it's just gonna be M, G, isn't it? It's just gonna be the weight. So nice and easy. We're just gonna say 5,000 newtons per coulomb times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, divided by mg, so that's just going to be 9.11, let's just say 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31, times g. There we go. So now it's in powers of 10, so 5,000, that brings us up to times 10 to the minus 16, minus 31 on top, so let's add 31 on top, so that's going to take us up to just plus 15. So I'm going to say that that is 5 times 1.6 times 10 to the 15 divided by 9.1 times 9.8 and that gives us uh, 8.9 times 10 to the 13 so it looks like the answer is going to be d four alpha particle head-on collision great song by newfound glory that gold nucleus containing 79 protons distance of closest approach is that many meters what electrostatic force acts on the gold nucleus when at this separation okay so f is equal to yes one over four pi epsilon but we can shorten that to k that is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9 to 2 sig figs really really useful shortcut so k q q over r squared so that's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9 such a handy shortcut times by well we have 79 protons and an alpha particle of course has two protons so therefore what we can do is say yeah 79 times 1.6 or we could do 79 times two, and then multiply that by the charge of what one proton is, but we're gonna to have to make sure that we square that. So if you do that, just make sure that you do square it. Um, it. That's where people quite often go wrong when trying to do that shortcut. Then divided by four times 10 to the minus 14 squared. I don't think I'm going to sort out any powers of 10 here. And that gives me 22.8 newtons. So it is B. Five, two fixed parallel plates, P and Q, we have 100 volts, 70 volts, therefore the difference in potential, potential difference, you might say, is 30 volts. Okay, uh, proton is fine. Which line gives the direction of F and the value of delta EP? Okay, so we know that the field lines go from positive to negative. In this case, they're both positive, so it's just going to be, well, they've already shown us uh, that, which is nice, uh, direction of F. Yeah, it's gonna to be towards Q, isn't it? So it can't be A, can't be D. Uh, oh, okay, so how much energy is it gaining? Well, it's gonna be plus. Okay, we're looking for then the change in potential energy. Well, if it's going to the left, if it's being attracted towards this other plate, then it's gonna be moving, so it's gaining EK. So if it's gaining EK, that means that it's losing EP. So therefore, it's going to be minus 30 electron volts. 
Not a super easy question, that one. A bit weird. Six, electron moves through a distance of that. And we have a field strength of that. What's the work done on the electron? Well, we know that work done is equal to force times distance, but electric force is equal to EQ. So it's going to be EQD. So it's going to be 2000 times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times by 0.1. Powers of 10. Yeah, we don't need to calculate for this. Oh, we definitely don't need to calculate for this. Look, 2 times 1.6. So we're going to end up with 3.2. So it can't be A, B, or D. It must be C. Nifty shortcut. Seven, four positive charges. I guarantee this is going to be a potential question. Uh, yeah, there we go. The total potential is that. Now, potential is a scalar which means that they just add up. It doesn't matter what direction they are in. So the potential due to 1Q is equal to, yeah, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. We have to do that in this case, times by Q over D. And so therefore, if we have that, 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 so we have 3 already, that means that we're missing 2Q over 4 pi epsilon D. So therefore, it just has to be D, doesn't it? That's the charge on that last charge. Eight, charge spherical conductor, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what is the potential of the spherical conductor? Well, we know that field strength is equal to KQ over R squared. Potential is equal to KQ over R. So therefore, we're looking for potential that is equal to, well, this, but times an R. So, nice and easy, the answer's D. Easy question, that one. I've got a really good video about all of the equations linking together, if you want to check that out. Check out my fields playlist, by the way. Nine, conducting sphere holds a charge of that. It's placed centrally inside a second uncharged conducting sphere. Which diagram shows the electric field lines for the system? Well, it's an uncharged thingy, and the field lines can go through this uncharged sphere, so they don't just stop, so it can't be B. Uh, they're not going to change direction either, so that's not sense. So the question is, is it going to be A or B? Field lines show the direction of force on a positive charge. So if there was a positive charge there, then which direction is it going to go? Well, it's going to go away from the positive charge in the middle there. So therefore, C has to be our correct answer. 10, ionization potential is V. Electrons of mass M, charge, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, fine. Electrons being accelerated through a potential or whatever is equal to EV, and that's equal to kinetic energy. So that's nice and easy, isn't it? So rearranging this, we find that V squared is equal to 2EV over M. Square rooting it, we end up with D. Basically, it's just asking, what's the speed of charged particles accelerating through a PD of V? 11, electric field lines act into the plane of the paper. So, like so. An electron enters the field at 90 degrees to the field lines. Okay. The force on the electron is... Ah, easy, isn't it? Well, like we just saw uh, two questions ago, we know that field lines show force on positive charge. So, therefore, it's not going to be zero. It's not going to be 90 degrees to the field. That sounds like magnetic fields, doesn't it? It's going to be opposite to the direction of the field because electron is negative. So it's going to do the opposite to what a proton would do, for example. 12 positive charge is placed in an electric field where the potential is that. What's the potential energy of the system? Easy. We know that energy is equal to QV or delta V. We know that potential is equal to energy divided by Q. I know I'm putting E when I should put work done or whatever. Let's put potential energy. Fine. It's a problem, isn't it, with having capital E for electric field as well. Point is, it's QV, so it's 2 times 10 to minus 4 times by 500. Doesn't get easier than this, folks. Of course, it has to be uh, A or B, but potential energy is just joules. So the answer is A. Super easy question. 13, which shows echo potentials. In equal potential difference near an isolated point charge. Right, right, right. Point charge can't be A, can't be B, because, well, A is a uniform field, so that can't be right. B, these could be field lines coming out of a charge, but we're not being asked that. We're being asked for the equipotentials, and we're told uh, that there's a point charge here, something like that, but we know that equipotentials get further apart as you get further away because they need to tend to zero 
because they need to be 0 at infinity, so therefore it can't be C, it's going to be D. 14, two fixed charges of Q and 3Q. Uh, minus 2Q is given to each charge. Okay, so Q is then going to minus Q, and then 3Q is going to just plus Q, okay? So the magnitude and the direction of the forces between the charges. Well, they're now going to be opposite charges, so they're going to be attractive, so we can't be C, can't be A. And, well, we're going from F is equal, let, let's just do it, so K, Q, Q over R squared, but this one's 3Q, so basically we're going from F is proportional to, well, you get what I mean, so 1 times 3, so that's just 3. And then afterwards, it's going to, we don't care about the minuses, we only care about the magnitude, we're going to just minus Q and Q. So it's just going to be minus Q times Q divided by R squared, don't care about that. Point is, is that it's one times one. So it's going from three to one, it's going to a third of its original value, it's going to be D. 15 at a distance L, the electric field strength is V. Okay, so electric field strength is equal to KQ over R squared or L squared. Why don't they change the letters just to catch us out? So what's it going to be like distance three? Oh, we got potential as well. Fine. So V is equal to KQ over L. All right. So if L is tripling, then that means that on the bottom of the electric field strength equation, this goes up by times nine. So that means that because it's on the bottom, field strength goes down by a factor of nine. So therefore it can't be A, can't be B. Uh, potential, of course, so that, that multiplies by three. So the whole thing goes down by a factor of three. So the answer is C. Easy question, that one. 16, we have two charged particles, right, we have the total distance, Ugh. additional plus 2q, oh, this looks similar, okay, so this is then going to plus 3q, and this is going to plus q, very similar to what we saw just now, just the opposite way around, uh, but the distance is increased to 2d as well, so f is equal to k, q1, q2, divided by, well, d squared in this case, so what's happening? Well, we're going from one and one to three times one. So therefore, this top bit multiplies by three, but then the bottom bit, that multiplies by two, so that multiplies by four, so it's just going to be times by three quarters. So the answer is D. 17, two protons are separated by distance R. Electrostatic force is greater than the gravitational force between them. What's the best estimates for, what's the best estimate for X? Interesting, okay, so the electric force, we're looking basically just for the ratio of electric force to gravitational force. So, KQ, well, we can go for Q squared actually, can't we? Because it's KQQ, over R squared divided by GMM or GM squared over r squared of course the r's cancel because they're the same distance apart and so well all we then need to do well we're just talking about orders of magnitude aren't we so we know that this is 9 times 10 to the 9 so i'll tell you what i'm just going to say around 1 times 10 to the 10 times by the charge so there's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 so i'm going to say if that's squared then i'm going to say 10 to the minus 38 so that's minus 19 uh, doubled and then divide by well 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 i tell you what i'm going to call that minus 10 and then we have the mass of the proton so what's that 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 so i'm going to say minus 27 times 2 so there's minus 54 okay let's write this out again so on top it's times 10 to the minus 28 and on the bottom it's 10 to the minus 64 so that's the same thing as multiplying by 10 to the 64 on top. And that gives us 10 to the 36. So there we go. Didn't have to find the actual value because, well, our orders of magnitude here, here, here are quite different. Sometimes they're not that nice. Sometimes they're so close together you would have to do the full calculation, but not often. 18. Okay, two parallel plates. We know what that means. We know it means there's a uniform field. They're trying to catch us out again here. What's the magnitude of the electrostatic force acting on the particle? Well, it's not going to be zero, is it? We have here a distance d. So what is the electric field strength 
inside this field? Well, it's just going to be V over D, isn't it? So the force, of course, is going to be equal to EQ. So that's equal to VQ over D. Just because it's in the middle of the fields doesn't mean that there's a different force on it. The field strength would be the same here as it is here, as it is here, as it is anywhere in here. The force anywhere inside this uniform field is the same, and that is QV over D. The answer is C. 19, we have, oh, we have the total distance. Okay, we've seen these kind of questions before, haven't we? Saw some in thermal, saw some in SHM as well. Here we go. We're looking for the point at which V is zero. So we're looking for this distance here. I'm going to call that R. So we know that at this point, V1 is equal to V2. So that's KQ1 over R1. Let's say that for now is equal to KQ2 over R2. Now, K's cancel, of course. And, well, we don't have R2. That's the point. We don't have this distance here. So what we're going to do is replace that with the total distance. I'm just going to put 120. Take away R1. Of course, I can then drop the R1, can't I? Okay, cross-multiplying. We end up with 120 minus R divided by R is equal to Q2 over Q1. Therefore, we end up with 120 minus R take away one. You're always looking for one. You're always looking for a one to pop up when you're doing these workings out here. That's equal to four divided by six. Now, the reason we do four divided by six, maybe I've been a little bit lazy here. We know that the magnitudes of the potentials has to be the same. Really, we should say V1 plus V2 is equal to zero. That's what we should say. So therefore, V1 is equal to minus V2. So really, there should be a minus in all of these. So the minus basically just falls out during all of the workings out there. So therefore, this is equal to two thirds. So that means that 120 over R is equal to two thirds plus one. So that's equal to five thirds. Therefore, R is equal to 120 divided by 5 thirds. So in other words, 120 times 3 fifths. And that gives us 72 millimeters. Not a super easy question, that one. Easier when it's done in gravitational fields instead. 20, isolated spherical conductor. Okay, we're now, we've got to be careful here because this is 2R now. So therefore, this is 3R, very easy mistake to make. Okay, point T is a distance 2R from the surface. What are the electric field strength and electric potential at T? The electric field strength, well, uh, we know field strength is equal to KQ over R squared, and so therefore R has gone from R to 3R, so therefore it's tripled. That goes up by times 9, so therefore the field strength has gone down by a factor of 9, Oh, that has to be our answer, then D has to be our answer. Let's just check potential. Yes, we know that V is equal to KQ over R. If that is multiplied by three, then potential has gone down by a factor of three. So yes, that is correct. 21, O is the center of a negatively charged sphere. That's negative. K and L are two points. Okay, we have equipotentials there. All right, which statement is true? The work done in moving an electron from M to K is the same as done in moving an electron from K to L. Oh no, that's not true, is it? Because we're going along a field line here, so work is done there. No work is done moving along an equipotential because it's in the definition, isn't it? The potential isn't changing, therefore the energy can't be changing. So that's not true. The work done in moving a positron from K to M is the same as that from done in moving an electron from K to M. No, because, well, it's a bit mean, it's because it's the opposite. The magnitude might be the same, but it's, one's going to be minus, one's going to be positive. No work is done moving an electron from M to N. That is correct, because it's a long N equipotential. No work can be done. There's no change in energy. No work is done going from L to N. Of course, that isn't true, because we are getting further away. 22, small object of mass M has a charge Q. We have a uniform field, fine. What is V? Well, we know that it's an, we know it's a uniform field, therefore we can say that, so it's basically levitating there, so therefore we must have weights pulling down, force due to gravity, 
and we have the electric force pulling upwards therefore the they are going to be equal so therefore we can say that the force due to the electric field is eq and that's equal to mg pulling downwards but we know we have want something with v in so we're going to replace e with v over d because it's parallel plates so vq over d is equal to mg therefore v is equal to mg d over q the answer is b 23 1.5 millijoules of work is done when a charge of that so that's energy i can't really put e can i there we go and we have a charge there all right what is the potential difference between m and n easy good grief we know that just potential difference is energy divided by charge so that means well, that's all we're being asked wowzers so it's just going to be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 30 times 10 to the minus 6 let's pop the plus 6 on top i tell you what i'm going to call that 15 times 10 to the minus 4 so therefore i can say plus 6 on top so that just ends up being 2 so essentially just 1500 divided by 30 so therefore that just gives us 50 volts finally 24 parallel plate capacitor is fully charged and disconnected from the power supply if it's disconnected from the power supply this comes up in capacitors quite a bit so there's a bit of overlap here if it's disconnected from the power supply q is constant if it's still connected then v is going to be constant but q is constant in this case a dielectric is then inserted between the plates so charge stays the same so we know it's going to be a or d electric field strength the electric field strength actually decreases it's a bit of a weird one by putting these polar molecules in between two parallel plates you're actually decreasing the electric field strength which actually increases the capacitance seems like one of those counterintuitive things so there we go hope you found that helpful if you did please leave a like if you want to see more pmt questions obviously go and visit physicsandmasstutor.com great website thanks for watching i'll see you next time